Well, today, the Call of Duty brand is seen as a shadow of its former self. From 2008 to 2013, the developers were on a major hot streak, releasing best-selling games year after year. And at the same time, a video site called YouTube had started to truly flourish. Naturally, with COD being so popular, gamers began posting videos to the site to get attention off their sessions. One early adopter would be Only Use Me Blade, known in real life as Brian Risso. Brian succeeded in a time when not many were, making thousands of dollars a month off of trash-talking others in Call of Duty. Unfortunately, this trend would eventually pass, as all trends do, and the creators who made their name on entertaining COD gameplay would need to adapt to the changing landscape or risk becoming irrelevant. Blade was not able to do this, beginning to fade into obscurity as the COD community slowed down. Then, any success he had remaining was cut short by his own actions because of his crippling addiction, and it would ultimately destroy everything he built. Despite connections with some of the biggest gaming channels of his generation, today he lives as a man with ruined relationships, terrible health, and a reputation so thoroughly destroyed that that any viewers left are just watching in horror as he somehow continues to go lower with each passing day. This is the story of how Only Use Me Blade ruined his life. It's not right that they don't have an organ. You should be welcome, whore. I like the guy that Only Use Me Blade used to be and the guy he is now is a real wreck. Remember that time that he that girl borderline in the back of that RV van when he went back there and grabbed her all up? Did you play assault or inappropriately touch Jessica? Yeah. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah, it's worth mentioning, all of this is after he's purged the YouTube of the clips of him groping and sexually harassing and assaulting women. So if some random fucking ugly bitch gets groped, she gets groped. Accept it. What a class act. This guy is the exact person your parents tell you never to end up like. No, I'm not brushing my teeth at all now. Only use me blade, a profoundly alcoholic man. I mean, he has 100% undoubtedly become a total degenerate piece of shit. Only Use Me Blade, real name Brian Risso, made his online debut on YouTube on March 24th, 2009, at age 25. A few weeks later, on March 28th, he would upload his first ever video. It was an early form of what would eventually make Brian into a semi-popular YouTuber. That, of course, being his impressive Call of Duty gameplay. What made Brian stand apart from other YouTubers uploading similar content at the time was his immense skill and precision he showed in combat while only using knives, hence his name. Opting to use knives limited Blade to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, which, in a game primarily revolving around shooting people took quite a bit of skill. This talent would quickly catch the attention of viewers who were impressed by his knife skills. After uploading his first video, Brian would consistently upload montage videos of his COD knife gameplay. While the viewership numbers might not look all that impressive today, where even average videos from popular content creators can get half a million views, back in 2009, these videos were huge hits and would receive very good viewership for their era. Videos like Don't Stab the Host and Assist with a Knife would become iconic among his fans and are still thought of fondly by many. After only being on YouTube for 8 months, Brian managed to hit 10,000 subscribers in December of 09. This wave of success was helped by the enormous popularity of the COD franchise. In 2009, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was released, a game that many fans consider to be one of the best in the entire series. Continuing its trajectory, Blade would take one more month to reach 30,000 subscribers. And back in 2009, this was pretty impressive growth, and it just goes to show how well liked he was during that era. He'd then make connections by partnering up with other prominent COD YouTubers of the time, like CNanners. Hello everyone, my name is C. Nanners, and I have a guest with me today. Sir, if you would be so kind as to introduce yourself and tell the people who you are. Sure, Adam. Uh, what's up guys, it's Only Use Me Blade here, and um, uh, like the name says, uh, all I do is I uh, shank people when I play uh, Call of Duty. By May of 2010, Blade already had official merchandise, and he decided to reveal his face to the internet. Keep this face in mind for the end of the video, just to consider how much 10 years of atrocious behavior is able to change a person's body. But we're not there yet. In 2010, Blade was approached by Machinima, a large and popular gaming network that was well known for partnering with small gaming channels to help them earn more revenue. The network clearly recognized Blade's rise to popularity and saw potential at a time when gaming channels couldn't earn money on YouTube without a network like Machinima. Thankfully, this came at a very opportune time as Blade had just been fired from his job as a bouncer. Now that he was partnered with Machinima, Blade was given the opportunity to network with many other creators who were huge in the Call of Duty scene at the time. This gave him an idea. What if he did collaborative videos? This is where Dual Tag comes in, a series in which he would play with another popular COD YouTuber to exchange their audience. The first episode guest starred White Boy 7th Street, a popular COD gaming YouTuber at the time. 
The series contained entertaining commentary between the two, combined with Blade's excellent knife gameplay, and it proved to be extremely successful for his channel. Seeing the elevated view count on his newly minted series, Blade realized that collaborations were the way to go. So he recruited others for these videos like Woody's Gamertag, X-Jaws, and Minnesota Burns. All of these collaborations allowed Blade to pull from their audiences to build his own. And with him inviting others to his content, he was also invited to be in other people's content. Namely, in 2011, Blade was invited to join an in-person Call of Duty tournament hosted by billionaire Alki David. This particular tournament was not part of any national league, as back in 2011, the esports industry wasn't nearly the behemoth it is today. Alki David himself is a British Greek entrepreneur and businessman known for his involvement in various industries, including media, technology, and entertainment. David's career and activities are marked by both his business successes and controversies. He's maintained a high public profile, and his endeavors continue to be the subject of media and public interest to this very day. And for some reason, this billionaire at the time had a big interest in the YouTube gaming scene. This entire tournament was solely funded by Alki, who also put up the money for the grand prize. Called the Billionaire's Challenge, it included many other prominent COD YouTubers, as well as one other future lolcow, Wings of Redemption. Funny how that works out. The other contestants included names like White Boy 7th Street and Woody's Gamer Tag. Shortly before the event was announced, Alki stated that he wanted to have a man, quote, euthanized on stream, which the surprise of nobody, garnered a significant amount of backlash from both the participants as well as the general public. However, as the old adage goes, any publicity is good publicity, and because of this controversy, the event gained a significantly increased amount of viewers. The tournament itself was a disaster both in planning and execution, but because of that, it gave Blade a significant amount of exposure. And among the many people Blade met at this event was none other than the infamous YouTuber and part-time garden gnome, Keemstar. Keemstar was hired as one of the hosts at this event, and after talking, the two quickly realized that they actually had a lot in common and they became fast friends. This may seem odd to people who are familiar with Keem now, but it's important to remember that this is far before Keemstar became the face of Drama Alert and before he became the person we know him as today. This was way back in 2011 when Keemstar was involved in the professional COD scene and making questionable statements about what viewers could potentially type in chat about a certain individual named Alex. W Riz Keemstar. This friendship proved quite fruitful and after just a short time being friends, Blade considered their friendship strong enough for him to uproot himself from his home in Seattle and move all the way to Buffalo, New York so he could live five minutes from Keemstar. This was a personal decision, but also a business one. Blade wanted to be closer to Keem because both of them were content creators, they got along really well, and there was a lot of potential for both of them to benefit by collaborating and working on businesses together. As time passed, it became clear that Blade and Keem hit it off as their friendship became stronger, with them appearing on live streams and podcasts together, where they provided entertaining banter and commentary. This helped both of them gain a wider audience on the platform, and the two even began their own podcast called The Bad Kids Show. Blade was gaining serious viewership, and would even end up starring on a dance competition called Dance On, which needless to say, he didn't win. After this, things went smoothly for Blade for around a year. His channel continued to grow steadily, and his new residence near Keemstar meant that he enjoyed a significant boost in viewership from their collapse. But this wouldn't last forever, as in October of 2012, his views started to drop off. This wasn't because of something Blade himself did, it was simply because the overall popularity of COD began to fall off. Similar to many other trends on the site, Call of Duty content had enjoyed a relatively fruitful period of massive engagement, but then it began to drop off as the next big thing in gaming took its place. Other COD YouTubers would notice the shift in the tides and begin to pivot their content to other more varied sources, trying different games until they found one that either the algorithm or the audience seemed to really enjoy. Keemstar, seeing the tides shifting, decided to start Drama Alert, a show that would ultimately surpass anything he had done with gaming and make him the de facto face of online gossip. Only Use Me Blade, however, did not choose to adapt his content and stubbornly kept uploading COD knife montages to rapidly diminishing returns. His channel would cover over six iterations of the Call of Duty franchise, and throughout each of them, Blade would really only upload knife gameplays and nothing else. Growing bored of the repetitive and bland content, viewers would slowly stop watching. If there's one rule for long-term content creation, it is that creators must adapt to survive. The YouTube landscape is constantly changing and shifting, and if a creator is either unable or unwilling to change their videos to fit the new paradigm, they are sure to suffer a slow, painful viewership decline until they reach the very bottom. Perhaps, if Blade had followed that rule, his channel and life could have been on a way different trajectory. But also, if that was the case, I wouldn't be talking about him right now.
After two years of slowly declining viewership, Blade would seemingly strike gold with a new form of content that he dubbed Drunk Streams. In these streams, Blade would essentially just sit in his gaming chair and take money from viewers as they paid him to do shots. Although Blade would drink anything so long as it could get him drunk, he had a special affinity for Jaeger. Considering that Jaeger is 35% alcohol and the minimum super chat donation for this stream was $5, it doesn't really take a genius to figure out how this went wrong very quickly. In one of the more notable events to happen on stream due to his intoxication, Blade would end up calling a girl a hard R lover in a stream. Even in 2015, when Twitch was much more rough around the edges, this was still very much against TOS, and quite likely to end up getting you banned. What I'm saying though, Steph Jade, is what is your stance on black people? What? I love black people. N lover. Huh, did you go and say that word? Knowing this very well, one of Blade's stream moderators would call him on the air and beg him to shut down the stream and delete the VOD to avoid getting banned. Hearing that his income could be damaged because of what he had just said, Blade intelligently replied by saying he would shut down the stream, stop drinking, and then he swiftly did so. You need to end the stream, like, right now, dude. I know that sounds... You need to end your... Mouth, After Blade had sobered up and realized what he had done, he would upload a video to his main channel titled Time for a Change, where he would apologize and open up about his drinking problem. Most of you guys used to know me as the dude that stab people when they knifed them. And lately, over the last year, because I've been doing what's called drunk streaming, where I sit in front of the computer and people donate money for me to take shots and take shots and I get stupid and it's a shit show. Pretty much in the community, instead of being the fucking chill dude that has a crazy outlook on life that plays Call of Duty in a certain way and makes some chill commentaries and gun game reactions or whatever commentaries, interesting points of views. I'm not that anymore. I am known as as fucking drunk. Blade apologizes to anyone he's hurt while drunk and promises anything he said wasn't how he truly feels. He also opens up about how his problems with alcohol have completely ruined all of his previous romantic relationships because of how he acts when he's drunk. Along with apologizing for the previous stream incident, Blade also apologizes for the other instances of him saying the gamer word that hadn't been addressed up until this point. In this video, Blade would also reveal that the recent stream incident had not only cost him the goodwill of his audience, but it also caused the destruction of some relationships with people important to him who no longer wanted to associate with him publicly due to his actions. As is common with many alcoholics, Blade discusses how he's unable to simply have one drink, and every time he drinks, he will keep going until he's blackout drunk. He finishes off the video by saying that he's a completely different person when he's sober versus when he's drunk. And drunk Blade is a huge asshole. Meanwhile, who he is when he's sober is what he's genuinely like as a person. It may be easy to brush this aside as a cheap excuse for shitty behavior, or an attempt to garner sympathy, but it is worth noting that Keemstar himself has said this exact same thing, likening Blade to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hide when he's drunk. Very smart, very good friend, very intelligent. However, when he <laughs> drinks alcohol, we're dealing with Blade Type B, okay? I'm talking about Type A. I was friends with Type A. Type B is the drunk guy that you guys all see online. Even throughout most of his alcoholic meltdowns, Keemstar continued to be friends with Blade all the way up until 2019. Keep in mind that this podcast was recorded after 2019 when he ended his friendship with Blade, so Keemstar would have no apparent reason to defend the guy, really. A turning point in Blade's online career would occur several months after he first started doing drunk streams. This is when he would completely stop uploading COD Knife gameplay and exclusively drank on his channel. By this time, some of his genuine fans had already unsubscribed or no longer watched him, so those that were still around were there for the train wreck. They weren't concerned about the repercussions for his health or career, they just wanted to see what crazy thing would happen next by continuing to donate to see his drunken antics. This would be the single worst decision in all of Blade's online career, possibly even beyond failing to diversify his content. By continuing to make his only source of income, his addiction, he was basically performing operant conditioning on himself. For anyone unaware, Operant conditioning is a method of learning that uses rewards and punishment to modify behavior. Basically, by punishing for a selected bad behavior or rewarding for a selected good behavior, you use the brain's reward mechanisms to condition a person or animal to perform a certain task. This is what Blade was doing whenever he would start drunk streaming. Every time he went live, he would teach his brain to associate the financial reward and positive social interactions he got from fans with him drinking. So every time he got a dopamine hit from getting more money or a compliment from his fans, his brain would learn to associate that dopamine release with being drunk. Further 
cementing his need for alcohol. Blade had found a foolproof strategy to min max his alcohol addiction to an unthinkable degree. For some people, this might sound like the perfect job. After all, who wouldn't want to be paid to drink booze and play video games? But it certainly is not the perfect job for someone with an addictive personality and a complete lack of introspection like Blade. It may be perfectly fine in the short term, but for a career, this very obviously isn't sustainable and will very quickly lead to a myriad of negative effects. Unfortunately, among the few skills Blade has, Foresight definitely is not one of them. His streams quickly began to take a toll on his physical and mental health, with significant weight gain and drunken rampages becoming more and more common over each live stream. Some people might think the worst thing you could do being a live streamer is to have no one watching, but Blade was actually somehow below even that. If you're live streaming a video game to no viewers consistently, at the very least you're getting better at the game you're playing. And as far as viewership, there's the potential for growth and upward mobility. Blade, however, was getting worse. Unless speedrunning liver cirrhosis is a category in GDQ 2023 that I just haven't heard of, you can't get better at being a drinking streamer. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The more you get blackout drunk every night, the worse you're making yourself mentally. Blade would have a few short periods of sobriety here and there after promising to get clean, but every time he would try, he would return to drinking shortly after. The main issue is that every time he tried to get sober, Blade would realize he had literally nothing else going on in his life. On many occasions, Blade would lament about how his friends his age were getting married and starting families, while he himself had nothing but Call of Duty. All my friends have have gotten girlfriends and gotten married and are starting to have kids and are owning houses and being adults and I'm still in kid mode. Alongside his lack of personal growth, another issue was that nobody wanted to watch his COD gameplay anymore. All of his original fans were long gone by this point, and the only people left were people who wanted to see him drunk. On the rare occasions where he would try and upload a gaming video, they would perform horribly with no views and therefore no money. That meant the only way Blade would get any attention on YouTube was getting drunk on stream. These live streams on Twitch would continue until 2015, when during one of his regular streams, a chatter asked Blade to touch his butt. At this point in the stream, Blade was extremely intoxicated probably beyond the point of even remembering he was live streaming. So he got up and did just what the chatter asked and a little more, facing his rear end to the camera Nikocado Avocado style for all the fans to enjoy. And then he used his finger much like a doctor would to test for colon cancer. This got him banned from Twitch permanently. It's probably safe to say that after the previous Gamer Word incident, Twitch was looking for a way to get him off the platform and this would seem to be the perfect reason for them. Getting permanently banned and losing a substantial amount of income didn't appear to even phase him though, as he would immediately move to YouTube and start live streaming the same content there. Blade's YouTube channel once boasted a respectable 500,000 subscribers, and with an amount that high, it would be fair to assume that he would enjoy a higher viewership than the minuscule amount he'd been getting on Twitch. However, considering by this point his reputation was already in the gutter, the transition to YouTube didn't gain him a significant increase in viewership. Now on YouTube, Blade would once again resume the shot streams, and perhaps finally learning from his old mistakes, start to try and hop on popular gaming bandwagons such as Fortnite in 2017. He actually seemed optimistic at the time about his future on YouTube, and it seemed like he may finally be turning things around. So the reason why we say final drunk stream is because when World War II comes out, I'm going to be streaming a lot and I'm also going to be making videos. Get back to the old me, new Call of Duty, Snipe Only, all that good stuff, instead of like getting drunk all the time. In January of 2018, Blade would once again find himself embroiled in a controversy caused entirely by his own actions. The catalyst for this event began all the way back in the winter of 2016 in Kansas City when Keemstar was planning to host a live meetup with Blade. They had originally planned it for Sunday, but due to a large ice storm that was incoming, they made the decision to move it to Friday night at the local bar in case some people couldn't make it due to weather. Only about 20 people showed up, and one of the people there came up to Blade and told him he was his biggest fan and that he had been watching him since he was a little kid all the way back in 2009. He called Blade is hero. After chatting a bit, this same guy ended up getting down on one knee and proposed to his girlfriend in front of Blade and Keemstar, asking her to marry him. She accepts and starts crying. Everyone applauds. It's a very happy, touching moment. What could possibly go wrong? Fast forward to two years later. It's New Year's, and the other streamers he was living with at the moment are having a huge New Year's party. Now, at this time, because of the aforementioned butthole incident, <laughs> Blade is banned on Twitch. For anyone unaware, Twitch's ban policy includes a segment that states if anyone who is banned even shows up in someone else's live stream who isn't banned, then that non-banned person gets permabanned instantly, no questions asked. If you're a banned streamer, you can't show up on other people's streams. Because of this, Blade was relegated to the cuck shed, forced to stream alone in the basement. The other streamers upstairs decided it would be fun to invite some of their biggest fans to the party, so Blade decides that he should do that as well. Trying to think of who his biggest fan is, Blade obviously thinks of the guy who proposed to the love of his life in front of him. So this guy comes over, and keep in mind he's now married to his wife. They meet Blade, and talk, and then they 
they go upstairs to talk to everyone else. At one point during the night, this super fan's wife comes downstairs to hang out with Blade. They get along, they're having shots, having a good time, and then Blade and her really start feeling each other in a very literal way on live stream. Shortly after that, they start full on making out directly in front of the camera that's currently live streaming to the entire internet. So now, while Blade is full on making out and grabbing the breasts of this recently married woman, the Blade super fan, probably ex super fan now, walks downstairs and sees the two of them making out and just stares flabbergasted before turning around like he's on a swivel and walking back up the stairs. Blade notices this and tries to get him to come over, but to no response. And if you think that no human being could possibly be more shameless than that, well, I have some bad news because later, after being exposed for making out with his biggest fan's wife directly on stream, Blade starts to her on live stream out of frame while the husband is still upstairs. I mean, you can't make this up. Now, it's worth saying that this woman was not an unwilling participant. She was fully okay with this interaction. Everyone was consenting. That being said, it was probably a bad idea for Blade to make out with his fan's wife on live stream, regardless of what she wanted. And this is part of what makes Blade so entertaining, the endless train wreck. Incidents like this almost feel like an episode from a TV show, but it's probably also safe to say that Blade never would have had this interaction if he wasn't drunk in the first place. Ice Poseidon, whose real name is Paul Danino, is a popular streamer well known for pioneering the IRL, or in real life genre. He gained prominence on Twitch for his unique style of content, which involved broadcasting his daily life and interactions with people, whether he was walking around in public, traveling, or attending events. As his streams are just real life, his content is known for its unpredictable and unscripted nature. When he had a dedicated following on Twitch, his streams sometimes attracted criticism and controversy due to the behavior of some of his viewers and the individuals he interacted with on camera. The most notable example being the time an entire flight was canceled due to one of his fans calling in a fake threat to the airport that he was currently live streaming from. This also got him permanently banned on Twitch, forcing him to move to YouTube, much like Blade. Ice originally gained a following by streaming the game RuneScape, and it was during this period that the message CX was frequently used in chat, an old school way to depict a facial expression before the inception of emojis. The frequency of this term's usage ended up becoming the defining aspect of his community and brand, later leading him to name his IRL streaming group the CX. Network. The CX Network, therefore, was a collection of many different IRL streamers owned and operated by Ice Poseidon. In 2018, Blade would meet Ice live on stream, and the two seemed to get along really well. Then, in the summer of 2020, Ice Poseidon put out a tweet asking his followers what content creators he should invite to the new streamer house he had purchased in Florida. Many suggested that Blade should be invited to live in this home, and after much deliberation, Blade was actually chosen as one of the candidates to start living in this new IRL content house. If his drinking was bad beforehand, living in this house set him into overdrive. He was getting competitive with how much he could put back. In the live stream video where Ice interviews Blade as a potential tenant of his newly purchased house, it quickly becomes apparent that Ice was not looking to invite Blade to be a huge personality and someone who is a respected member of the household, but rather as cheap, trashy entertainment for the audience to gawk at. What makes this even more obvious is the fact that shortly before this trip, Blade and a few other members of the IRL community had gone on a trip together to Hawaii. And as usual, Blade got completely blackout drunk and inappropriately groped another member of the live streamer group named Jasmine. This goes to show Blade's complete disregard for any social norms and the rapidly deteriorating mental state he found himself in. It became clear that the true purpose of the interview was for Ice to determine whether or not Blade would be a good business asset and if the cons of his complete moral depravity outweighed the potential benefit to be made from using him for content. This is made very obvious by the fact that instead of asking personal or relevant questions to Blade about living in the house, he chose to ask questions about hypothetical situations where the group would get evicted from the home and how Blade would go about fixing them. Ice seemingly decided that the pros outweigh the cons and decided to let Blade and all of his degeneracy become a permanent fixture at the newly founded CX Mansion for all the other streamers to have to deal with. He was now in the company of other streamers with dubious pasts like Sam Pepper, as well as Hampton Brandon and a Greek God X. Blade didn't really have all that much going on for him personality-wise. Viewers didn't find him likable or funny, and considering his controversial history, the only thing people really enjoyed was watching him get blackout drunk. But in all fairness, cut the guy a little slack considering the fact he spent the last six months frying his brain with Jaeger bombs, I'm surprised he can even string together words to form a cohesive sentence. Although Blade was technically a part of the CX network, it's safe to say the other members in the house didn't really like him that much. Other members made it clear to Blade on numerous occasions that they found him annoying and abrasive, especially when he was intoxicated. Blade. What up? Did you get off the fucking balcony, dude? No. Yeah, you did. Uh -huh. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. I can smell it. Smell it. I'm... You peed off the balcony and you admitted it, so. No, I didn't. What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? I don't like this 
shit that you talking to me about me being You peed able. off the balcony onto the floor. Another thing to remember is that at this time, Blade was much older than any of the other live streamers in the house. Most of the other streamers were in their early 20s, while Blade himself was almost 35 years old. Well past the age you would expect someone to be behaving like your average douchebag college frat guy. His older age, combined with his aggressive attitude and downright disrespectful behavior towards his housemates and the guests, meant that it didn't take long for Blade to become despised by every other streamer. It really goes to show just how much of a fuck up Blade is, if he's somehow too obnoxious for the CX network. Considering that the CX network is pretty much just a collection of white trash IRL streamers aiming to be the online version of bum fights. If you somehow end up with a worse reputation than Sam Pepper, it may be time to seriously consider how you screwed up your life so hard. These are the same people who won't hesitate to start random fights or mace bouncers just because someone donated 10 bucks asking them to. You have to have an ungodly low moral character for someone like that to consider you too obnoxious. Over his time in the Florida house, Blade would get into many different altercations while intoxicated. Since the only content he produced was drinking alcohol at the request of his viewers, he was almost always inebriated beyond belief. This very quickly became a very apparent conflict of interest since the entire reason Blade's audience watched him was because they wanted to see him act like a drunk idiot. But because Blade was such an awful person while he was drunk, it would regularly disrupt the other streamers' stuff they were filming in the house. There are probably enough instances of Blade being a belligerent person that you could make a compilation with a runtime longer than all the Star Wars movies put together. So in the interest of time, I've selected what could be considered his greatest hits. One notable instance would be when Blade, obviously black out drunk would try to pick a fight with one of Ice Poseidon's moderators. Can you hold the, him in the chair, please? Okay. <laughs> all right, let, all right you, you three just stay. Don't put too much pressure on his belly or he'll vomit. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Don't make me fuck you up. Please stop. I'm really oh, come on. Stop that. I love all my people. <laughs> The next instance would once again be caused by Blade's tendency to get a little bit spicy with his language after having too much to drink. And in this live stream, Blade would yell the N-word extremely loudly while there were multiple black people in the room. Another common issue Blade would cause around the house was his apparent inability to urinate in a proper receptacle, instead preferring to simply pass out drunk wherever he was and let it go, so to speak. This wasn't restricted solely to whatever piece of furniture he passed out on, as Blade would also get in trouble for urinating all over the house in a variety of different places and then he would deny doing it when confronted by fellow housemates. No way. No way. You pissed on my jacket! No way. Oh I love my you. god! Hey, I love you! No, so get much. up! I swear to God. Not content with only harassing non-neurodivergent housemates, Blade decided he needed to be more inclusive in his verbal and physical abuse. And so during a live stream where a young autistic man was trying to clean up a mess that Blade had just created, Blade decided to start attacking him for no apparent reason. Apparently, having learned absolutely nothing from his previous encounter where he assaulted a fan on stream, Blade would attempt to grope and hit on the girlfriend of a fellow streamer named K-Pop right in front of him. He'd repeatedly ask her for sex, to which she tried to awkwardly laugh it off, until it was too much and she simply said no firmly before walking away and abandoning the interaction. Seemingly indignant at this blow to his ego, Blade would respond by calling her boyfriend K-pop a shitty streamer. You, you suck as a streamer, dude. Later in the night, during the same party live stream, Blade would call one of the girls in attendance poor for not wanting to take Jaeger shots with him, which is probably the correct choice on her part given everything we've seen up until this point. After his love quest with the two previous women failed to bear fruit, Blade would again be caught either groping or attempting to grope a myriad of other women. When he was confronted by viewers about these incidents, he would respond on live stream by saying this. So if some random fucking ugly whore bitch gets groped, she gets groped. Accept it. You should be fucking welcome, whore. Seriously, you should be fucking honored that I would ever grope you, you stupid bitch. Spoken like a true romantic, Blade surely is the modern day Shakespeare with such stunning and eloquent responses. After having his romantic attempts shot down once again, this time by fellow roommate streamer Grimoire, Blade would say to her face that he hoped that she died in a fire. Again, very classy. Oh, die in a fire! Yeah, I want you to die on a fire. Go away, dude. Later in 2018, both Ice Poseidon and Keemstar would attempt to stage an intervention to try to get Blade to curb his drinking and therefore stop his abusive behavior, but to no avail. Blade refused to acknowledge that he had an issue, either being in complete denial of his downward spiral or simply not caring enough to make an effort to change. Although it must be stated that this intervention was of dubious sincerity, as it would appear that Keemstar was the only individual there who truly wished for Blade to get clean, while some of the other people may have wanted the content. Shortly after the failed intervention, 
Blade would be removed from the CX network house, with the reason being that the CX network was for IRL streamers, and since Blade didn't do any IRL stuff, it wasn't a good fit for him. Blade himself stated in a live stream that the breakup was mutual and that there were no hard feelings. However, it's often been speculated that the real reason for his removal was because everyone in the house despised him and didn't want to put up with his drunken antics any longer. Reflecting back on his time in the CX network house, Blade would say that although he enjoyed the exposure and liked interacting with fans, he hated the small percentage of people that were quote, toxic. The one thing I wasn't prepared for was I didn't realize how big of an issue callers were. Even though I love the extra exposure that the CX Network, like, that they got from me being on the website and more people coming in, there is a very small percentage of them that are like super toxic. Despite saying he was completely fine leaving the CX network, a mere 10 minutes later, Blade would find himself back with IRL content, this time for an upcoming RV road trip. Looking back on it now, I'm sure this is the point where Blade wishes he could have made a different decision because, as abysmal as his reputation was, he would somehow manage to plunge it even further into unimaginable levels over the upcoming months. Shortly before the ill-fated RV trip, Blade would make one last terrible decision in April of 2019 by throwing a dog off of himself because he didn't want it to lick his face. He would attempt to defend what he did on the PKA podcast saying that the dog was perfectly fine, but that did very little to quell the online outrage. This event would be the straw that broke the camel's back for Keemstar, being the event that caused him to publicly disavow Blade and end a decade-long friendship. He could deal with Blade destroying his own life, but once his behavior began to truly hurt those around him, including an innocent dog, Keem cut him off. In the tweet disavowing Blade, Keem would reveal that he had tried to help Blade get sober three different times, each time paying for everything out of his own pocket, but had no success. The reality is that for someone struggling with addiction, the only way for them to get help is for them to want it. Blade at this time was having more fun streaming than anything else, and with no real support network of people who cared about him, he wasn't keen on getting help either. If the dog incident was Blade reaching rock bottom with his online reputation, then the RV stream is when he metaphorically took a sledgehammer to a litter of kittens. As Blade would do something so terrible, it almost landed him in prison and ended his online career permanently. This came during one of the many RV trips taken with members of Ice Poseidon's community. It's worth noting his behavior had already crossed the line inside the RV, from vomiting in public spaces to urinating everywhere, and generally just being a complete nuisance to be around. But the most damning of the controversies would be the allegations of misconduct. In 2019, 19, one of the RV streamers was a woman named Gucci's. The trip got off to an okay start with Blade casually chatting with Gucci's at a table, and he would ask her the infamous question, have you ever been raped? You've been raped. No. You should be. Surely that was just a one-off thing and definitely isn't foreshadowing for anything that might happen later in the trip, right? Unfortunately, this was not just a one-off instance as Blade's perversion and general scumminess continued throughout this trip. At another point later in the RV stream, Blade was sitting in the passenger seat in the front of the RV, talking with another member of the group named Bjorn, who was seated in the driver's seat. Blade turns to Bjorn and asks him if he should go have sex with Gucci's, who at the time was passed out drunk in a bed in the back of the RV. It's difficult to make out exactly what Bjorn says, but the phrase phrase, uh-oh, can clearly be heard as Blade gets up and says he has to pee while making air quotations with his hands. Then, shortly after this interaction, there's footage of Blade walking into the room where Gucci's is sleeping with no pants on. The angle of the live stream camera only had a slight view into the bedroom, making what happened hard to see as only the lower end of the bed was visible. But a lot of people believe they saw Blade do something horrible there. Goose would later claim that Blade did what everyone believed happened, but she cannot remember the event due to being so intoxicated. After this event goes down, Blade is then once again in front of the RV speaking with Bjorn. Blade suggests to Bjorn that they should dump Gucci's on the side of the road, and then Bjorn and the other streamers reply with, what the f*** is wrong with you, and Bjorn calls him severely messed up. Bjorn, uh, should we keep or should we drop her off on the side of the Road. Moments like this, it's unclear if Blade remembers that outside of the scumbags in the RV with him, there are also hundreds, if not potentially thousands of people watching this all happen. Immediately after this stream, there was swift backlash and a huge uproar from the fans who were rightfully disgusted by Blade's actions. Seeing the allegations, Blade attempts to masterfully deflect any criticism by saying, It's not rape if they don't have an organ. Okay. This, surprisingly, was not an airtight legal response, and after Gucci's reported the incident to the police, Blade was immediately kicked off of the RV trip. Shortly before he was kicked off the trip, Bjorn would tell Blade that he absolutely believes Blade is guilty and should go to prison. Gucci's also claimed that while she did tell the local authorities, she never went through with making a formal police report to charge him or having a medical examination done to determine what happened. This situation exploded all over the internet when it happened. Blade hadn't been this talked about since he was peaking in the Call of Duty days. In fact, it went so viral that Blade 
Blade ended up getting interviewed by Chris Hansen, formerly of Dateline NBC. During this interview, Blade is notably sober and actually tries to give a coherent refute to the accusations. According to Blade, Gucci's was very intoxicated the entire night and was being very flirtatious with everyone in the RV, including him. He also says that he was not particularly wasted that night. This day, I really didn't drink that much because Gucci's was performing karaoke. She was being pretty ridiculous. She was really, really, really drunk. I think it was nervousness. Um, we went back on the RV and while we were back in the RV, she was really sexually aggressive towards everyone on the RV. Uh, my friend Bone Clinks, uh, my friend Bjorn. Uh, she was really into Bjorn. Blade claims that Gucci's was actually interested in Bjorn, not him, and was constantly jumping on top of him. He also claims she tried to pull him into the RV bathroom, which he was not interested in. Then Bjorn goes back there, and Blade doesn't know what happened with them, but he assumes that intercourse may have happened, and then Bjorn returns to the front. According to Blade, this is when the incident really starts. Blade claims him asking Bjorn if they should have sex was just a joke. I admit saying this is all on stream. I was like, hey, should I go back there and have sex with her? It was clearly a joke. Bjorn went along with the joke, and I was just tired. All I wanted to do was get some sleep at the big bed. As far as when Blade goes to the back of the RV, he claims he went to sleep next to Gucci's and nothing happened. He denies touching her at all. Did you assault or inappropriately touch Gucci's, Jessica? A absolutely not. I did not touch her in that bed at all. After the Hansen interview, Blade would upload a video to his channel basically saying that because he was interviewed by Chris Hansen and because the police didn't arrest him, that meant he was innocent. I'll just let that sit with you guys, I guess. No further commentary needed. But as has been established, Blade is not a rational human being. After the entire situation, he would appear on live stream smugly saying that he had proved the haters wrong, and since he wasn't in jail, he was obviously innocent. Then, for the cherry on the shit Sunday, he smugly says that he wants to do it again. Oh, rip her again, rip her again, rip her again. But don't worry, even if Blade managed to escape legal justice for his actions, you can rest easy knowing he's still receiving plenty of cosmic justice for his lifetime of terrible behavior. One of the most prominent and visible effects of Blade's absolutely terrible health is the rapid decay of his leg tissue. Due to a combination of his terrible diet and rampant alcoholism, Blade has developed diabetes, which has resulted in significant tissue damage to his legs and partial necrosis of much of his leg tissue. Diabetes, when poorly managed, can lead to a condition known as diabetic foot ulcers, which, in severe cases, can result in tissue damage and even the rotting of the legs. People with diabetes often experience peripheral neuropathy, a condition in which high blood sugar levels damage the nerves in the extremities, such as the feet and legs. Neuropathy can lead to a loss of sensation in the affected areas, making it difficult for individuals to feel pain, heat, or cold. This may also be a factor in why Blade seems wholly unfazed after getting in violent brawls or performing an incredibly stupid stunt while intoxicated. Furthermore, diabetes can also lead to peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, which is characterized by narrowed or blocked blood vessels in the legs. This reduces blood flow to the extremities, making it more difficult for wounds and ulcers to heal. Due to the reduced sensation and poor circulation, people with diabetes may develop small sores or ulcers on their feet or legs. These ulcers can result from minor injuries such as blisters or cuts or getting the sh kicked out of you by a drugged up IRL streamer, which often goes unnoticed due to neuropathy. In the worst case scenario, if an ulcer becomes infected, the infection can spread to the surrounding tissue. When tissue dies due to a lack of blood supply, it's referred to as gangrene, and if left untreated, gangrene can progress to the point where amputation is necessary to prevent the spread of the infection. This is what Blade currently has. But he's blissfully unaware of it, and instead of going to a doctor like a normal person would, he seems to be in complete denial about his health, believing that if he doesn't pay attention to it, then the issue will just go away all on its own. Which is not the case, it will not. The far more likely option is that they're going to amputate one or both of his legs eventually. Now, I'm no doctor, but I don't think the best way to prevent infections is to continuously pour whatever alcohol happens to be present into your wounds. In fact, it seems more like speed running or eventual leg amputation, but then again, what do I know? I'm a YouTuber, not a doctor. Blade seeming sees no issue with his failing health, and in each subsequent live stream, you can see his condition getting worse. Due to this, many of his detractors have jokingly started referring to him as only lose me leg, and have started placing bets as to when his legs will be removed. After being unceremoniously exiled from the RV, Blade would begin streaming again, this time in a content creation house with many other streamers. This event begins during a party that was being hosted by the streamers at the house, where Blade had invited a fan of his named Willie to come hang out with them. This guy supposedly had driven cross-country to come see Blade because he was such a huge fan of his content. Apparently, Willie had taken some sort of benzodiazepine that day, most likely Xanax or Ambien, and then proceeded to drink heavily at the party. On stream, he could be seen taking a whole red cup of Crown Royal 
Royal Whiskey at once, which is a lot. And for those unaware, mixing benzos with alcohol is a terrible idea. Benzodiazepines are central nervous system depressant drugs, meaning they slow your body's natural nervous system functions. When mixed with alcohol, which is also a CNS depressant, this can cause the central nervous system to shut down so much that it stops working. This is obviously very bad because the CNS is responsible for regulating your breathing and your body can simply stop breathing to the point of causing death. Shortly after taking the shot, Willie could be seen on stream and passed out standing up against a railing. Directly after this, he collapsed hard onto the ground. Played and the other streamers either didn't notice or were far too intoxicated to comprehend the gravity of the situation, so they didn't immediately call the paramedics, instead choosing to hold his nose and draw all over his face for about an hour before realizing something was seriously wrong and they finally called 911. In a cruelly ironic twist of fate, the text-to-speech donation service can be heard saying, he took too much Xanax and is currently dying, while the other streamers continue to draw on Willie's lifeless face. Perhaps if someone had been sober enough to comprehend the message being told to them, then the night could have gone much differently. After the paramedics arrived, the streamers present at the house crowded around the EMT officers and continuously attempted to speak with them even after they asked several times not to be on camera as they were actively trying to save this guy's life. Willie was taken away by the ambulance and unfortunately would pass away as a result of oxygen loss to his brain, proving fatal. The fact that they watched someone collapse on the ground and suffocate in front of them with zero remorse is evidence of how far gone some of these guys are. It's heartbreaking and infuriating to think that if they had made that call a few minutes earlier, someone may not have lost their life over such a stupid mistake. Around two months after the tragic incident, Blade would upload a video revealing more details while also denying any responsibility in the matter and attempting to shift most of the blame onto Willie for choosing to drink in the first place. Which, in fairness, he does deserve some blame for, but also, you should have called. Willie was in the hospital and he actually got up, was walking around his own accord and trying to check himself out. He went to hospice, did the same thing and actually did check himself out. It's revealed in the video that Willie had a history of both heart and lung issues for which he had been in and out of the hospital multiple times. It was also revealed by the coroner's report that Willie had previously been in the hospital on life support due to the severity of his health complications. He eventually recovered. After a short while at a hospice, Willie would check himself out of the hospice against the advice of doctors, which explains the weakened condition he was in before his passing. Blade seems to think that Willie was improving and slowly getting better, which is why he was sent to a hospice, which just goes to show Blade's complete lack of understanding of how anything related to the medical system works. For the unaware, hospices are a specialized type of care that focuses on providing support and comfort to individuals who are in advanced stages of a life-limiting illness or are nearing the end of their lives. The primary goal is to enhance the quality of life for patients and to provide compassionate and holistic care that addresses their physical, emotional, social, and spiritual needs. His transfer didn't mean he was getting better at fact, it meant the complete opposite. It meant they believed it was likely he was approaching the end of his life and wanted to provide care during that time. Despite this, Blade thought it was acceptable to invite him to a streamer party and have him drink excessive amounts of alcohol. The toxicology report indicated that, besides a small amount of THC, there were no other intoxicants present in his blood, ruling out that his death could have been caused by another drug such as methamphetamine or fentanyl. The official cause of death was listed as congestive heart failure, obviously due to his medical history and the combination of substances he took before passing out. In the section of the video addressing his culpability, for the passing of Willie, Blade only seems to show concern when it pertains to his public image and people blaming him for Willie's death. He seems to show no remorse or guilt for potentially causing the death of a close friend in his own home. It's almost funny in a twisted way to listen to Blade read out the coroner's report of a friend who died right in front of him, while every five minutes TTS donations are laughing at the situation, asking if Blade is still going to stream from prison. The opinion of whoever did the death report shows that the death was natural. He was awake in the hospital, moving around. So much so that he checked himself out. I don't think he should have checked himself out, but that's not my place to say. I wasn't around for that, but he checked himself out and then died shortly afterwards, dude. This isn't supposed to be a thing about, oh, look, I'm innocent. I've never really claimed my innocence because I don't have to, because I know I'm innocent. I didn't do shit. That's not what this is about. And as far as if there is an investigation, I don't care. Investigate the fuck out of me, dude. There you go. That's my official response. Play. Will you do fire sales from prison? I'm not going to prison, dude. One would think that a normal person would be racked with guilt, believing they may have been responsible for the death of an innocent person, but it appears Blade is too far gone to manage that level of human empathy, and instead chose to monetize the death of a friend to pay for his nightly booze intake. If there's one thing that unites all of Blade's continued failures, it's his inability to grow up and take responsibility for his actions. There's nothing wrong with making stupid mistakes, it's something we all do throughout our entire lives. After all, failure is often the greatest teacher. What separates Blade from his peers in this regard is his determination to not change his lifestyle, no matter how far 
far he falls. Even as he continues to suffer disastrous health consequences like losing teeth, gaining weight, and suffering horrific tissue damage, he keeps indulging in the same exact vices and performing the same events that are actively causing him real damage. Blade suffers from what could be called Peter Pan syndrome, which causes him to be unable to grow up and mature. But instead of being stuck as a boy like Peter Pan, he's stuck as a 25-year-old frat guy. Blade himself fails to understand the fundamental truth and seems to think there's no issue with him doing the exact same things he did a decade ago, when that very clearly isn't the case. Getting blackout drunk and subsisting off of fast food and soda is something that someone who's in the prime of their life can take no problem, but when you continue that behavior well into your 30s, it begins to have serious ramifications. On top of his physical health, his inability to mature has also harmed his mental well-being. He's unable to find romantic fulfillment and unable to find someone who can even stand to be in the same room as him for a prolonged period of time because of his complete disregard for other people's boundaries. The only people he has around him now are the few degenerates who are degenerate enough to willingly associate with him. It's difficult to say just how much further down Blade will go considering how far he's already gone. Maybe finally losing a leg will force him to take a reality check, or maybe he'll just shrug it off and keep drinking. Whatever happens, there's one thing that's for certain. It'll be live streamed for everyone to see, for better or for worse. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, leave me alone.